On this episode of Color Quickie, we're looking at this paint color by Benjamin Moore. I've been getting a lot of questions about this one and not for the reasons that you might be thinking. What we're going to do today is talk all about white heron. We're gonna get into some technical information about the paint color. I'll give you some corresponding trim colors for it. And at the end, I'll give you my color palette. Three color pairings that I chose specifically for this color. Does that sound awesome? I think so. Press that like button and let's get right into it. Now, White Heron is an interesting paint color, not because of its complexity. For all intents and purposes, this is a white, <laughs> or at least an off-white of sorts. And when we're talking about white paint colors, you can either move into cool or warm territory, but this one is unique where it's sort of feels like it's somewhere in the middle. It is a bright white that isn't overly cold and maybe there is the slightest hint of warmth in it. It's that touch of gray that gives it its signature, slightly cooler appearance without feeling blue. Now, one very interesting fact about this color and it's probably the reason that it gets requested so much is it has a striking similarity to another Benjamin Moore color. And you might know what this color is if you've looked at the also known as portion of the Benjamin Moore website, because White Heron has a few different color codes, including CC30, which is Oxford White. And that's because White Heron is Oxford White. They're the same color, but just rebranded and renamed. So let's dive into some details here. How light of a color is White Heron slash Oxford White. Well, we can look at the LRV or the light reflectance value and we can see that it's an 86.69, which is essentially 86.69% out of 100. 100 being bright white and zero being dark black. It's the percentage of light that any color reflects. And this is very important when we're talking about white paint because normally if you pick a white, you want it to be at least somewhat bright. And this is in that upper echelon of paint colors, but it's also not the brightest white on the market. That would probably be Chantilly Lace if we're looking at Benjamin Moore, but it's still bright enough to feel white. Even the trained eye won't really see a ton of the undertones unless you're comparing it to an even brighter white, let's say. One of the nice things about White Heron or Oxford White is the fact that it is so versatile because it really has the most faintest of undertones. They're not really gonna be perceivable to most people. It's just a clean white that I like to use for a variety of different reasons. I've painted entire houses with this color and I'm talking walls, trim and ceilings just because it's not the brightest white so it's not too obnoxious, but it's undeniably clean and stark, which also means that it's going to work with a number of different colors. There's nothing really putting it in a polarizing position where it's gonna clash too much. So really the world is your oyster. And that's actually a spoiler for my second trim color. But anyway, let's start with my first choice. If you're going with a trim to go along with white heron on the walls, let's say, if you're not continuing that same white heron color on the baseboards, I'd probably recommend Chantilly Lace only because it is the brightest white that Benjamin Moore makes, so you will have enough contrast between the two. It won't be super clear cut, but there will be a difference in brightness. Chantilly Lace is the lighter color, so if you want a clean white trim that had just a bit more vibrancy, then that would be my choice. Now I mentioned oysters, and that's because my second trim color, which is a little bit of a darker choice, not too dark to be honest, it's called Oyster Shell. And this really is a bluey greeny gray, kind of in that 67-ish LRV range. So not dark, it's kind of a lighter mid-tone technically, but what I like about it is it sort of shares the gray aspect of White Heron, where you have just a little bit of a cool lean without being overly blue. This one does feel like it started as a grayish, like a beigey gray, but then you added a little more cool green into the mix to just make it a bit different. It very much will pop against White Heron in a wonderful way. So those are the trim colors if you're painting your baseboard stores and frames. What about your color pairings? The first one I would choose would be Hushed Hue. And this is a color that is lighter than oyster shell, so not quite as bright as white. But what's nice about it is it has this this lovely warmth to it, almost like a wheat color, I would say, a little bit of a hay color. It is this muted yellowy beige creamy color with just a hint of green. So there is some of that continuity with some of these colors where there is just a little bit of a cool lean, although this would definitely be the warmest color choice in this palette. The ways that I would use this color is you can just have it as one of your main colors if you were a little bit bold, but I put it in there just to cut through some of the cooler tones that are happening within the palette in areas that maybe you didn't want a gray green or a bright stark crisp white. This could be a good choice. Now the next color pairing is kind of an interesting one. It's described as a pillow soft green and it's called Bali. So this is very much a greeny bluey color, but it's toned down enough where it's not 
overly vibrant. It's not fake or unnatural looking. And it does have this transitional appeal where it's not quite green, not quite blue, somewhere in the middle. And that's awesome because it'll connect with Hushed Hue because they both share that little bit of green happening and will definitely pop off of the trim colors pretty nicely. White Heron as a paired color will clearly be different just because of how much brighter it is. And then Oyster Shell, a much more subtle sort of difference because they are fairly close in terms of how light they are. And you also have that relationship of gray, green, and blue happening. But Bali's green and blue is much more prevalent, much more noticeable. It'll actually soften those qualities in Oyster Shell, making it feel much more neutral in comparison. And then my accent color of the bunch, I didn't want to go too far into a different direction because I didn't want it to feel too jarring necessarily. This color is called Lush and it is a deeper green with around a 21 LRV. So very much a darker color. I wanted to avoid doubling down on the blue green aspect that we've explored in two other colors. This one definitely feels warmer to me. It's a more herbal green. It has this sort of earthy nature, maybe a touch of brown sort of mixed in to help it feel grounded. So instead of a gray green, it's more of a brown green, but only a touch of brown. I feel colors like this are very therapeutic and kind of nurturing. Even though it's dark, because it has that sort of life to it, I feel like you can use it in more spaces than you might think. It's not just an accent wall color or a powder room color. This is something that you can use in more areas if you want to incorporate darker colors within this palette. So here's the palette all together. Let me know what you think. It's a little more greeny blue leaning, but I do like it. How about you? And also be sure to check out our Patreon. There are completely unique brand new videos that go up on our Patreon every single week. All it takes is a subscription from you. So please check it out as we have a catalog of 20 plus videos already there right now. But as for YouTube videos, we got one right over here.